Hi everyone, my name is Crystal and today I want to talk about all the non-hormonal birth control options out there. Now, if you're like me and you went to health class when you were younger, you probably learned about the birth control pill and condoms. And that was probably the length of your knowledge around birth control. A lot of us don't really know about our options when it comes to birth control and there are a lot of non-hormonal options. So I'm gonna just jump right in and I'm gonna talk about a variety of non-hormonal on hormonal birth control options. So the first one would be fertility awareness based methods. So fertility awareness based methods is kind of an umbrella term that includes a variety of different methods like the symptothermal method, the Billings method, the Creighton model. There are so many out there. The one that you don't want to look at is the rhythm method. Now, fertility awareness-based methods use fertility signs like rising temperature, cervical fluid, and cervical position to determine fertile days. Some methods use a combo of fertility signs while others use only one, like cervical fluid. Fertility awareness-based methods can be used to prevent or achieve pregnancy, but on fertile days, you must abstain from sex or use barrier methods. When it comes to fertility, awareness based methods both partners have to understand the method and they both have to be on board using it so if you have a partner who's like I don't want to wear a condom when you're fertile or doesn't want to abstain from sex then that is something you guys have to talk about and see if a fertility awareness based method is actually going to work for you both partners have to be on board for this to work now there are many instructors out there that teach fertility awareness based methods and in order to get a very high efficacy rate, you need to be under the instruction of a teacher. There are no efficacy rates for self-teaching. No one actually knows how well self-teaching works. So if you want to seriously use a fertility awareness based method as birth control, you need to have a teacher. Now with that being said, the symptothermal method is 99.6% effective. So that's pretty amazing. Now, of course, like I said, that rate comes from being taught by a teacher. Please research them, but please hire an instructor and learn how to do it properly. These methods have rules, and these rules cannot be learned online or through social media. You really need to be taught. Now, moving on. The next method of non-hormonal birth control is a copper IUD. Now, a copper IUD is a T-shaped device that is usually made from plastic and copper, and it is inserted into the uterus by your doctor. Once it's inserted, it can last for up to 10 years, and there is is a little string attached to it so you can have it removed at any time. It is not permanent. Copper IUDs do not affect ovulation. Instead, they work by impairing sperm motility and change your uterine lining so an egg cannot implant. Now, it is important to note that copper IUDs can increase menstrual flow by 20 to 50 percent and may increase period cramping. So if you have a heavy flow already or if you have very painful periods, a copper IUD might not be right for you. Now, with all of that being said, the efficacy rate of copper IUDs is 99% effective. They are a very, very effective form of non-hormonal birth control. Now let's move on to barrier methods. So barrier methods are both female and male, and it's more than just condoms, you guys. Condoms are just one type of barrier method. So the first type of barrier method, which is the most popular, is condoms. So male, female condoms, they have about a 94 to 98% efficacy rate. They are very popular and easy to use, and they protect against STDs. There are a lot of different types. There's a lot of different Different brands. You can get them latex free. You can get them lubricated or non lubricated. It's really just a rainbow of condoms out there. So, whatever your needs are, they probably have it. Let's move on to the next form of barrier methods, which is the diaphragm. So, the diaphragm is about 84 to 94% effective. It's dome shaped and made out of silicone or latex. It must be left in place for six hours after sex, and it should be used with spermicide. Now, there are two types there is either a fitted one or or a one size fits all. Obviously to make it more effective, you want to go for the fitted size, which you would be fitted by a healthcare professional. Now the next form of barrier method birth control is the cervical cap. Now the cervical cap is 84 to 94% effective. It is dome shaped and fits tightly over your cervix. It should be used with spermicide and does not protect against STDs. It is prescription only because it must be the right size and fit to work properly. So let's move 
move on to the next barrier method, which is the sponge. It is 70 to 80% effective. It's made of foam and covers the cervix and contains spermicide. It must be left in place for six hours after sex. It does not protect against STDs and should not be used during menstruation. So moving on to the next one, which is spermicide, which is not a barrier method, but I wanted to include this one just because some people do use this alone. Now, spermicide is about 75% effective. You can use it with other barrier methods for extra protection and it's highly recommended that you do so. It can cause a lot of irritation and it does not prevent STDs. So I just wanted to throw this one in there as well. Now, moving on to the last form of non-hormonal birth control and that is permanent methods like tubal ligation and vasectomy. So tubal ligation is when you have your tubes tied and it is a permanent blockage of your fallopian tube so that eggs can no longer pass into your uterus. Tubal ligation requires keyhole surgery under general anesthetic. Tubal ligation is highly effective long-term contraception. So if you do not want children or you are done having children, it is a great method to look to um, for permanent birth control. It can be reversed, but often it is unsuccessful. So if you are not 100% sure if you do or do not want kids, then this probably isn't the right method for you. Um, I know a lot of people get this done after they're done having children when they know they don't want any more. This is always an option for people that are very, very certain in their decision of not having children or getting pregnant. Now, the last form of birth control, which is a very popular type of birth control, is vasectomy. Now, vasectomy is basically the male equivalent of tubal litigation. It involves the cutting, clipping, and cauterization of the vas deferens tubes. These carry the sperm from the testicles to the penis. Unlike tubal litigation, vasectomy is not actually surgery. It's done in a doctor's office with local anesthetic. Now, vasectomy is highly, highly effective. It is long-term contraception. Uh, reversals can be attempted, but again, like tubal litigation, sometimes they're not successful. So vasectomy is really for people that are very, very sure that they are not going to have children. So there you guys have it. Those are the non-hormonal birth control options out there. And I hope that this video gave you guys some more insight into your options with everything that I said, I just want you guys to take this information and go out and do your own research to find what the best method is for you. I just want you guys to feel empowered and understand that you have a lot of options out there when it comes to non-hormonal birth control methods. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you guys want to see more. I really, really appreciate it. And I just want you guys to know that as always, your cycle matters so much and I am here for you. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!